California Fish and Boat Commission. I manage the Cooperative Nursery Program for the Fish and Boat Commission. Uh, we currently have 147 sponsor organizations and 162 cooperative nurseries. The sponsor organization is a sportsman's club, an outdoor interest group, schools, even a federal prison is part of our program. And each one of them have at least one nursery, some have multiple nurseries, which is why we have more, more nurseries than sponsors. Cooperative nursery is different than a state hatchery in that the nursery does not rear their fish from egg to uh, fingerling and then onto an adult. The cooperative nurseries, they receive their fish as fingerling from our state hatcheries and then they raise the fingerlings to an adult size. Uh, it takes a couple of months to do. They usually receive their fish uh, in the spring and in, in early summer, so usually around June, um, some into July. And then they'll raise their fish until March or April the following year and they'll stock them as adults. The financial burden falls onto them to feed the fish, to pay for their own electricity, uh, to run pumps, blower motors, uh, lighting, and those sorts of things. And then it's their responsibility to stock the fish into um, waters that are accessible to the public for angling. Our cooperative nurseries receive uh, fingerling trout from the state hatcheries. They typically are two to four inches in length. Then they raise them to roughly 9 to 12 inches in length to be stocked for angling purposes uh, in the following spring. The amount that the co-ops typically stock is right around 1 million, which adds to the 3.2 million that are already stocked by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, which makes up for roughly a quarter of all trout stocks for angling purposes in the state of Pennsylvania. Typically our cooperative nurseries stock their fish by using a small stocking truck that they own. Um, typically they can stock right around 500 fish or so during each stocking and they will get a large group of volunteers together from the club. They'll load the fish onto the truck and they'll take them out to the stream of the lake in which they're going to stock them. We do have some nurseries um, typically up in our, our Lake Erie uh, drainage where they, they raise brown trout and uh, steelhead and they have the ability to essentially pull the screen out at the bottom of the raceway and they can push their fish right out into the stream and they are stocked directly into the stream. But for the vast majority of our nurseries, they do stock them on a stocking truck that, that they own. Today we will be seeing fingerling trout being loaded onto a Fish and Boat Commission stocking truck, which will be delivered to our cooperative nurseries for distribution into their nursery, uh, where they will raise those fingerling trout to adult sized trout for stocking next spring for angling purposes. What we're seeing here is hatchery personnel pushing the fish up into a crowded area so that they can net them easy. They will net them, they put them up onto a scale, they weigh them, they know how many fish per pound they have in each net full. Then they'll hand them up to the stocking truck driver and she will put them into the, the stocking truck where she has specific tanks designated for each nursery and different species of fish. Once those fish are on there and loaded, then they're ready to go to the nurseries. We're loading up both brook trout and brown trout, and they roughly are two to four inches in length. The approximate age of these fish is roughly eight to 10 months in age. Here we're seeing the loading of gold rainbow trout fingerling onto the truck. Our goldens are held inside in a round tank since our nurseries get such a few number of gold rainbow trout in comparison to production trout. Um, they're held inside just so they're easier to count, easier to get a hold of. They don't take up as much space outside in the raceways. So here you're seeing fish culturists uh, count out the fish, put them into buckets, so that then the amount is known to the, the culturist on the truck, and she's now going to dump them into, the, into a specific tank for each one of our nurseries. Our nurseries like to get these fish. Um, they're nice to put into the stream. They're, they're easier to see. Um, they're kind of a, a trophy catch, uh, per se, for some people, and they really like to see them. Ready? Yep. Yep.
What we saw here today was the distribution of fingerling trout to the Dunk Cannon Sportsman's Nursery. Uh, Brooks Browns and Rainbows were delivered as well as some, some golden rainbow trout. Uh, they were all evenly distributed um, into different sections of the raceway. The brook trout, brown trout, and rainbow trout along with the golden rainbow trout were mixed in with the rainbows. Uh, these fingerlings will be uh, cared for and raised by the uh, cooperative nursery and stocked in the springtime for angling opportunities. All of our nursery setups are different. They're very vast and unique. Some are inside, some are outside, some are tanks, some are, are raceways, some are earthen ponds. Um, so the offloading of the fish depends on the nursery that the fish are going to. If, if it's possible, our, our uh, hatchery personnel will offload the fish just by putting a tube onto the, or a hose onto the onto the truck and, and essentially just pulling a, a lever and letting those fish go through the tube into the raceway. Other times they're netted in, other times they're put into buckets and carried in and put into the raceway or whatever the holding facility, um, or whatever the nursery's holding facility is. What you saw today was only part of what the cooperative nursery unit does. We also provide technical guidance and assistance to all of our nurseries at any point in time throughout the year. We also provide assistance when fish become sick with diseases and in the aiding and treatment of those diseases. This allows for the fish to be healthy and to be stocked at appropriate size and health.